we uh, gather here this afternoon to uh, remember the life of Deborah Ann Fairchild. I remember her, I think, like most of us, as Debbie. I've heard the family refer to her as Debbie, so okay if I refer to her as Debbie uh, this, this afternoon. I think of the scripture verse uh, because Debbie participated in our refuge ministry as well as was a member of the Carpenter's Christian Church uh, that says uh, God in Psalm 46 verse 1 God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in times of trouble so I pray those words would be comforting to the family and friends who are here today let's pray together right now God we uh, come together this afternoon to pay tribute to remember the life of, of Debbie Fairchild and God uh, I know there's so many wonderful memories of her life I know personally I have so many but so many here with her family and dear friends we just thank you God most of all for her relationship with you Lord and today we trust because of her faith in Jesus Christ that she is in the presence of Almighty God and out of the suffering of this world. God, I pray that you would bring comfort and peace and help to this dear family. And Lord, I pray your loving arms would be wrapped tightly around them. And God, I pray that the words that uh, Brother Greg, that, that I share, the songs, God, everything would honor you and please you. Uh, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Deborah Ann Debbie Fairchild, age 63, of uh, Harrisburg, went to be with the Lord on Friday, May 22nd, 2020, at the Ephraim McDowell Regional Medical Center in Danville. She was born December 28, 1956, in Mercer County. She was the daughter of Alice Juanita Pippen. Baker and the late Bobby Eugene Baker. She was a retired clerk at Goodwill Store of Harrisburg and a member of the Carpenters Christian Church. Survivors include uh, two sons, Larry Wayne Fairchild and Robert Fairchild. Her mother, Alice Juanita Pippen Baker, a uh, one sister, Janice Sims, and one brother, Robbie Baker, all of Harrisburg, and she also had three precious uh, grandchildren and other family members and a lot of dear friends. I know that about uh, Debbie uh, so much. And so many memories that uh, you have I'm sure about about Debbie. Uh, just a couple that I remember that on Wednesday nights in our community for the last I guess three years or, or more, uh, we have a, a refuge ministry, and uh, Debbie uh, would come in with I know with her dear friend Cheryl and some family members uh, faithfully. I think just about every Wednesday night, and then I know Brother Greg talked about he'll share with you, but she was a faithful. A church member at the Carpenters uh, Christian Church. And uh, one, one memory that you all wanted me to share was that uh, Debbie's uh, grandson, Justin Wayne, and I know this family well, had a lot of memories I could share probably with them. Uh, uh, Justin Wayne would call Debbie uh, Q Tip because of her hair being um, white on top. So Justin uh, had that. And you all, they have other memories that you want to share. So I want to allow you to do that. You can share from where you are, or you can come up here uh, or stand in front. But if any, any of the family or friends here want to share a, a brief memory of Debbie's life, a lot of times this can offer a lot of comfort, can it? Sometimes it can be really difficult, but 
I encourage you to share them among uh, each other to offer uh, encouragement and inspiration. I wanted to share for just a few minutes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 11, because I find in times, especially like these, we can, we can sometimes wonder what happens to our, our loved one, especially those in Christ, what happens to them after we say die or, or passed on, but what, what happens to them at this time? And the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 addresses this very question because the people, the Thessalonian people had that same uh, question they were uh, raising, they were asking, they were wondering, hey, Paul, we've, we've got a lot of loved ones who knew Christ who have gone on ahead of us. What happens to them? So Paul begins uh, chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians Verse th uh, 13, actually, he says this. He says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. I want to let everyone know, I think you know that today it's okay to grieve. It's, it's okay to cry, to hurt. Uh, you miss Debbie. Uh, she's a precious gift to us and to you that God gave, and now she's going on, so you, you miss her. So it's, it's okay to grieve, but the Apostle Paul is saying, for those in Christ and those who go on ahead of us in Christ, we grieve today, but not as those who do not have hope. I think of that chapter in the Bible that we quote often, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, a lot of us maybe have even memorized that chapter in the Bible. And we talk a lot, a lot about verse 13 of chapter 13 that says, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And we talk a lot about faith, don't we? And we talk a lot about love, but that word in between, hope, sometimes we don't spend as much time on that word. And Paul says today you grieve, but you don't grieve like people who have no hope. And he goes on to explain that very reason. He says, For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. He goes on to say, We tell you this directly from the Lord. Now, Bible scholars believe that the Apostle Paul either felt like God spoke directly to him or he had a vision, or maybe when Jesus was on this earth, Jesus taught on this very topic, and the apostles passed this teaching down to the Apostle Paul. He says, we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Paul says, here's how it's going to work. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words, Paul says. So Paul's saying, for those who have gone on to be with the Lord, those in Christ, uh, when their body goes into the ground, we'll, later on we'll have the burial for Debbie. Uh, we know her as her outer, don't we, appearance, her, her, her body, the Bible calls that our outer, our tent. We know Debbie that way, but she has a soul. And her soul, because she's in Christ, her relationship with the Lord, the, the Apostle Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So today she's out of all of her suffering that her earthly body uh, had. She's out of the pain and pressures of this world and now into the presence of God. That's the hope that we have in the Lord. First Timothy 6, 7 says, tells us to put our hope in the Lord. We can do that because of Christ. Psalm 42.5 says, 
Why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. But Debbie often heard messages being in church. She heard Brother Greg proclaim the gospel uh, at refuge. We had many folks who came in to share their testimony. Every time we met at, we meet at the Carpenters Christian Church or we meet at refuge, we always give an invitation for people to respond, to know the Lord, to be baptized into Jesus Christ. Debbie knew that she's a follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, she exhibited much fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit that Galatians talks about. Um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. She exhibited, she showed a lot of that. Uh, her family knows that as well. Uh, but not because of her perfection, was she saved, but because of the perfection of Christ that Jesus died on the cross for her sins. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now I love the way that starts out because John 3.16 begins with God and it ends with life. But that word in the middle, whosoever, means all of us. Because I have no reason to stand up here before you today. I'm a sinner, but I'm saved by the grace of God. Many of you have told me you're a sinner, but because of Christ, you've been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. But that word whosoever covers the entire world. And I think there are a lot of places where I'm not included in this world. And you may not be as well. But with the God of the universe, he includes all of us. He says, this is for all of you. He put Jesus on the cross, the perfect sacrifice to die for us so that we can have our sins forgiven and be with God forever like we believe Debbie is now. Uh, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we're all in the same boat together. We're all sinners needing the saving grace of God. But God, uh, while we were yet sinners, gave His Son. The Bible says Christ died for us. He died for every one of us. God wanted to rescue His creation from their sins so that we could spend all eternity with Him. That we wouldn't have to know the punishment, the Bible says, of hell, but we could have the victory, the promises of heaven forever and ever. And I know if Debbie were standing before you today, friends, I know that she would want to tell you, make sure that you know the Lord. Make sure that you have a personal relationship with God like Debbie. Make sure your name is written in that Lamb's Book of Life because there's not a good enough deed that any of us could do in this earth, on this planet, that would earn our way into heaven. But it's through Christ. And then after we know Christ, God tells us to do those good deeds, to do those good works, to read His Word, to be a part of a church fellowship, and to be committed to Christ. And Debbie was that example, wasn't she? She was committed to the Lord, committed to her church, committed to our community through the refuge ministry. And I know to this preacher she was powerful example, and I know her preacher brother Greg would say the same to you today. Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14 when they were concerned that he was going on, he told them, hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you and so that one day you can know where I'm at and you can spend all eternity uh, with me. And uh, one of the disciples, Thomas, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know this place. And Jesus told him, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. And no one can go to the Father except through me. Our culture, our world sometimes says there's a lot of different ways to get to God. But Jesus said, that's not so. He said, there's only one way, and it's through him. It's through Jesus Christ. So friends, make sure 
you know the Lord. Make sure you're ready. We need to make sure we're ready for our appointed time to be with the Lord. But our time, the Bible says that our days are numbered. So we want to be ready so that one day we can see Debbie again but be with the Lord and our loved ones forever and ever. And then in Revelation, as I close in my comments here, in Revelation chapter 21, the Bible describes this place of heaven. There will be a new heaven, a new earth. And it's a place where there will be no more crying, no more pain, no more tears, no more heartache, no more death, no more hospitals, but a place that's perfect and we can be with God forever and ever. And I want to just share this poem now as I close my, my comments. I uh, thought it was fitting for Debbie as she's a, a, a mother and so much more to a lot of the family. But it's entitled The Watcher, A Mother. And I hope it brings comfort to you guys. It says, she always leaned to watch for us, anxious if we were late, in winter, by the window, in summer, by the gate. And though we mocked her tenderly, who had such foolish care, the long way home would seem more safe because she waited there. Her thoughts were all so full of us, she never could forget. And so I think that where she is, she must be watching yet. Waiting till we come home for her, anxious if we are late, watching for heaven's window, leaning from heaven's gate. I just want to let the family know and everyone here today, our prayers are with you. We pray God will give you peace and comfort. If you're 
described it as our earthly tent. Now, if you've ever been camping, you don't take your whole house with you. That's, that's, that's too much trouble. You just take this little tent that you can assemble quickly. You don't worry about all the things that you don't have in that tent that you have at your house home at home because you're just going to be there for a little while. It's a temporary deal. But a home where we're going to be for a long time, we want other things in that. Uh, it's permanent. In the New Testament, Paul is claiming we're only going to be on this earth for a while, and then we're going to transition to where we were truly created to be, our eternal home. Second Corinthians says this way. He says, For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a permanent place, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now later in that passage, Paul talks about how uh, while we're in this earthly tent that we groan. And those of you who knew what was going on in Debbie's life in the last uh, several weeks of, of her life, she was struggling in the flesh. She wasn't feeling good, in and out of the hospital, and had a lot of things. Her, her physical body was groaning uh, with the temporary state here on this, this earth. And she experienced some of that in her life. Our earthly bodies being the temporary tents that they are, are not made to last forever. On this, in this life, we get sick. We hurt. We, we, we have pains and disease. And, and we're feeling that in our world right now, aren't we? But those who are believers in Christ can actually get to the point where we say, as the Apostle Paul said, uh, sometimes I think to live is Christ, but to die would be far better. And that's not to hate this life, but if you're a believer and you understand what comes next, uh, you see this world through a different perspective, through a different lens. And in 2 Corinthians, he says, Paul says this, so we're always of good courage. We know that while we're at home in the body, our soul is in this body, we're away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. But be of good courage. We would rather be, Paul says, away from this body and present with the Lord. Paul understood what comes next. And so he didn't fear death. He said, when, it, when my time comes, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. And I believe that those of us who understand what we have in Christ can have that perspective where we don't have to fear death. Let me talk just briefly about what happens at the moment of our death. But I want you to see it's not to be feared. As a matter of fact, from that eternal perspective, it can be the best of the beginning of the best part of our existence. Psalm 116 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Now that might seem odd from an earthly perspective. Well, I don't feel there's anything precious about this, saying goodbye to a, a mother, a friend, and all the different roles you play in your lives. But you see, we're looking from here up and what we've, and what we've lost. But that's written from the top. Damn, what is being gained. And from Debbie's perspective, the homecoming that, that she is experiencing now, it is precious in the sight of the Lord. You know, when I received the news that Debbie was in very critical condition in the hospital, I prayed, and I prayed and said, God, if, if Debbie, if it's within your plan for Debbie to, to get back to life and, and be able to live the life as, as, as she once did and to enjoy it and feel good, then I pray that that would happen. That's within your will. But Lord, if you know that she's not going to get back to that point, Father, I'm confident she's ready. And if, you, if it be your will to heal her by just taking her with you. And I pray that it's peaceful for her. And, and obviously that's what he, he chose to do. Uh, when you have that perspective, you can't, you can't lose. The Bible says that at death, that soul that he breathed into our bodies is separated from our body. And in Luke chapter 16, Jesus tells a story about two men that died. One was a rich man who had everything the world could offer. Uh, the other was a beggar who had nothing by earthly standards, but he had the Lord. And when he died, he went to a place of great comfort and peace. It's called Abraham's side, and sometimes it's called referred to as paradise, where the souls of the redeemed go to await the return of Christ. And so the, the soul leaves this earthly tent that we live in and goes to its eternal destination. I believe the Bible teaches that the souls of the redeemed go to a, a place of great comfort and peace where I, I believe that, that all the redeemed await the return of Christ. And when we, we get to the great side, I'll share some more. Uh, I won't do it right now, but I'll share some more about what happens at the return of Christ. And it's just exciting, friends. 
if you understand that this is not the end. As John said, we grieve today because we're going to miss death. We're going to miss having her in a familiar role and seeing her, her smiling face and hearing her crack jokes. We're going to miss that, but not forever. Not forever if you know the Lord. And so when we grieve not as those who have no hope. Uh, 1 John chapter 3 says, Dear friends, we are already God's children, but He has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we'll be like Him, and for we will see Him as He really is. As I wrap up today, I just want to pay a, a tribute to Debbie. And the best way that I know to do that is to, to say something on her behalf. Because knowing that Debbie is the, 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 the person who loved God and loved her friends and family, I believe the greatest way to honor Debbie Fairchild today is to take this opportunity to tell everyone here, everyone that she loved and cared about, how you can be confident at the moment of your death. How you can make sure that, that you're ready for what comes next. That your soul, that when this body wears out, your soul is ready. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We don't get to heaven just by being a good person. I wouldn't qualify if that was the criteria. If you sin once, you're no longer a good person when compared to the holiness of God. But that's the bad news. But the good news is this. Jesus came to this earth to pay our sin debt. When he died on the cross, he was taking the punishment for our sins that we deserve. Now, he doesn't force himself into your life, but if by faith you will put your trust in him and profess him as your Lord and Savior, he will come in and the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross will be the payment for your sins. He asks that we repent of our sins. Now, that doesn't mean that you'll be perfect, but it means that the attitude of your heart changes, that you no longer just want to do whatever, but now you want to live your life in agreement with God's will. You want to strive to obey the things He asks us to do and to not do the things He asks us not to do. If that's the desire of your heart, it's said that you have a repentant heart. And finally, He asks that we signify this that's, that's taking place inside of us by being baptized. Baptism is a beautiful picture of burying the old person that was stained by sin and separated from God. We're going to put that person to death. Wash all those sins away. And raise up, the Bible says, a new creation in Christ. And He places His Spirit in our heart to live with us the rest of our days here on this earth. And it also marks as a deposit that we belong to Him for all eternity. Friends, if you've never made that decision, I, I believe and I'm confident today with the thrill that to know that if anything good can come from her passing, is that somebody today consider their own eternity, consider their own walk with the Lord, said yes to Jesus Christ. Uh, we would love to hear about that. If you would we'll catch John and I, you don't have to do that. But we would love to help you and help you along in your faith if we could. Um, but I'm thankful for Debbie Fairchild. I'm thankful for the impact she had on our church family and obviously the impact that she had on many people that are here today. Could I pray for you all as we close? God, we are, are grateful today. Thank you for sending Debbie Fairchild our way. Thank you, Lord, for the legacy that she leaves behind in her family. Thank you, God, for uh, the legacy of, of friendship and the kindness that she showed me uh, during, during her time here, Lord. I'm privileged to have known her. And God, thank you most of all for Jesus Christ that enables us to grieve, but not as those who have no hope. We know how this story ends uh, if we're covered by the blood of Jesus. So, Lord, I just pray that everyone here today would we'll leave with that same confidence, knowing that their life belongs to Jesus Christ. And if not, Lord, I pray that you will just put it on their heart to make that, that decision today. God, we pray that you'll give us comfort, give us peace, give us the assurance that only your word can and only the Spirit of God can. In Jesus' name we pray.